Hey guys, we're back from break and we have Mark Sargent on the line. If you're not familiar who, with who he is, you probably haven't seen the new documentary Behind the Curve, which is all about the flat earth theory. Mark is one of the biggest proponents of flat earth and we're going to talk to him today on Blackout. Hi Mark, how are you? I am fine and thank you very much for having me. I'm excited because flat Earth is a very fun subject. Right. I know uh, not everyone believes in it. I'm not. I'm not a believer, but I'm not also not one of those people that's adverse to it. Right. I'm willing to say that there's a possibility <laughs> that the Earth is in fact flat. Sure. Because I am personally not a scientist. I'm not an astronaut. I've never been to outer space, so I'm willing to give anything the benefit of the doubt that there's a chance to it. Right. So um, today on the show, I, I guess it's part of your mission today should be to try to convince me and convert me and convert the audience. So um, I guess jumping into this, how did you first become a flat earther? I first got into it in 2014 when I thought at one point I'd basically finished YouTube. I had gone through so many things in YouTube and gone down the conspiracy rabbit holes. Everybody knows there's all tons of conspiracies on YouTube. And everybody knows that Flat Earth is out there and everybody hates it, including me. And I hated it. And by the same time, it's like, oh, all right, it's the one thing I haven't clicked on. I'm going to click on it. And when I did, I, I started looking around. And I thought, you know what? I'm interested in some of it, but I should be able to debunk it in a weekend. And that was the biggest mistake I ever made. And then nine months later, forward nine months later to February of 2015, I realized I couldn't prove the globe anymore in a court of law. And so I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, and I put them out on the internet and put it out to the internet hive mind. And I said, you know what? Prove me wrong. Tell me how you can prove the globe and see if you can do it without using NASA, if that's possible. And that, and I thought honestly, and I put my phone number and my email address and my real name and everything out there. And I said, oh, and I thought that honestly, somebody from academia would call me up and shut the thing down. And instead the opposite happened where all of a sudden I had lots of people calling me saying, wow, this is really, really interesting. And then media people start calling me. It's like, wow, tell me more about this. And then subject matter experts, you know, from all branches of the armed forces and engineers and uh, air traffic controllers and everybody, pilots, you name it. They were calling me up going, you know what? You may be on to something. And the core, let, let me segue into this. What we're talking about here is that the earth is not a globe. You're not living on some little rock that's flying through the endless vacuum of space in five different directions at five different velocities. And instead you are living in a giant building uh, with walls and a floor and a ceiling and something that's so big that even our best and brightest, meaning the United States government and the Soviet Union, didn't figure it out until about 1960. And when they did, it, you know, kind of it reads like a science fiction movie plot. They decide, you know what, let's just keep this thing a secret for as long as we can. And that wasn't going to be forever. And here we are 60 years later. And it's, it's starting to fall apart because of the technology that the general public has. So there's no, you problem. believe you believe that we live in a dome, correct? Yes. Yes, I do. No, I mean, not just a dome. I mean, a physical building. So, yeah, the, it could be. I mean, there's a dome on the inside, but overall, the building is going to be some sort of square. Uh, it'd be like a, again, like a, like a planetarium, like a Hollywood backlot. So if that's the case, what do you think we are? We're uh, like, to quote the name of a band, do you think we're like an alien ant farm? <sighs> That's a good point. Uh, are, where, yeah, where is this little building? Uh, because remember, yeah. if, if, if space is on the inside, if you know the stars and the planets and everything are just pretty little lights up in the sky, then where is this thing? Uh, I'd like to think that we're on a table with a lot of other snow globes and that there are other civilizations out there like us and that there are... Is, it, intelligent beings that are controlling the you know way older than us and way more powerful and that we don't really have anything to worry about because again if we are inside some sort of snow globe then we don't have to worry about horrible things that are happening out there that science tells us you know space is a dangerous place and it's a very comfortable place and we're just here doing our thing i mean the whole idea of where are we honestly is one of the most um, I don't even know how to put it. It's kind of like distressing <laughs> when you try to really think about it. When you right. sit there and think, how are we here? What's out there? What is space? What's beyond space? Right. What is existence? What is God? It's, I don't like to think about it. Sure. It's distressing. Sure. Um, so I guess that could be a reason why this would be hushed up because it makes you think about where are we? 
and what is existence. Yeah. But um, a lot of the in a lot of the videos I saw, because mm. apparently if you can prove the flat Earth in the dome, it proves God. A lot of people, mm. uh, a lot is a big argument. Um, and people reference something in the Bi the Bible called the firmament. Right now, I've never read the entire Bible all the way through, but I have read definitely. I've read up to Sodom and Gomorrah, <laughs> and I've, I've read through Genesis, and I don't remember anything in there about the firmament. It, it, like it's really qu it's quick. It, you if you okay. blink if you blink you miss it. And oh look, I mean, come on, the Bible can be a dry <laughs> read from time to time. Yeah, yeah, it's a bestseller. We all get that, but it is not easy. I mean, it is. It, there's a lot of, of different things in the Bible which can be interpreted. But when it comes to the... Yes, you're absolutely right. The the Christian community, I mean, all your, your big five religious houses, Judaism, Buddhism, is, um, Hinduism, Islam, and Christianity, they all look at, at Flat Earth. They all could benefit from Flat Earth, but the Christian community has really latched onto it because of the firmament. Mm -hmm. The firmament was, uh, I believe, depending on what version, hopefully I get this right, is Genesis 1-8. And it's a real okay. quick line. And that is when the world was built, the, the firmament was created to separate the waters above and the waters below, which could be interpreted a certain way. Uh, the rest of the Bible, it's really interesting. There's only one verse in the entire Bible that even hints at the globe. And that's Isaiah 40, 22. And I don't want to turn this into a chapter and verse thing. That's not what I'm about. Uh, which says, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And all your, your Bible scholars will say, well, you know, the Hebrew word for circle is different from globe, ball, and sphere. Uh, everything I mean, else... that could also be that the flat earth is round. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually... What, yeah. How many times have I seen in the media where they say, oh, you know, round earth versus flat earth? And it's like, well, technically, round can be two-dimensional. I mean, uh, your dinner plate, yeah. the pizza, a uh, hubcap, your dining room table, and so on and so on. Uh, but everything else in the Bible it really leans towards a flat, enclosed world, you know, that it's fixed, immovable. Oh, I don't know. My, one of my favorites was the Tower of Babel, which is, you know, a Tower of Babel, this giant building that was going to bridge, act as a bridge from the earth to the heavens. Well, if that's on a spinning globe that's spinning around the earth and going through space sideways and that's going around in a galaxy, what exactly, where's that thing going? It's going nowhere because mm -hmm. it's it's always moving. But if it's on a flat enclosed world, it's going to the ceiling. It's a, it's a straight up story, and I, I think that's very telling. Yeah, no, I definitely. Um, to me, though, when I hear the verse about the firmament, I could see that being that it's a reference just to land mass. Sure, but there's there's but not. I mean, there's not just the that Bible's one. Though. The Bible, the <laughs> Bible. It's well, very uh, subjective how you want to take I anything agree. from there. Let me let me throw a different one out at you, and that was uh, Psalms nineteen one, which was he who the uh, and the firmament. Uh, showeth his handiwork. And you're thinking, okay, that's interesting, right? Well, the, what's interesting was is that particular Bible verse, just Psalms 19.1, was on the tombstone of Werner von Braun, the founder of NASA. Hmm. And it's like, why Why hmm. would you... And that's the only thing. I, day, Yuri was born, Yuri died, and that verse. And it's like, why... That's interesting. Why, yeah, why would you have that on there? You're a scientist. Why would you be talking about a dome structure? thought it was fascinating. That is very interesting. So is that like a clue that yeah. he, could he be calling that he's out like, from the grave? Yes, maybe. Yeah, yeah, this is a hoax. It's also strange. Someone like Werner von Braun, you would not think to be religious in any no. sense of the word. No, no, not at all. And yet he appears to be kind of hinting. Why not? Lots of people on their deathbeds, you know, make these little confessions. And I thought I thought it was yeah. interesting. So. Yeah. Now, that's another thing. So you believe that the whole NASA and the moon landing are a hoax, which that's actually, I mean, let's just remove flat Earth from the equation. Even if the Earth is a globe, I am 100% willing to totally believe that the moon landing was a hoax. I I kind of tend to believe that it was directed right. in the Nevada desert or on an L.A. soundstage by right. Stanley Kubrick. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that helped us. Uh, you got to remember, depending on how old your audience is, People have been picking at the moon missions, the Apollo program, ever since they happened. So, you know, once they shut it down in 1972, 
people have been even way before the internet people were going you know what some of this stuff does not make any freaking sense and so when we got involved and we started attacking the moon missions bringing that back up again there was so much material that was already there that it was it was easy for us and yeah the apollo missions are completely a fabrication from from a to z uh, everybody knows this uh, it is it was you know an american propaganda machine anyone can look i mean i could i could break it down in one or two photos where you're looking at it, it's just aged badly. Where they've had, there was a lot of things on the moon. The, the you know, they obviously hired a, an advertising. Has team. anyone done a frame by frame of it? Um. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like people, frame by frame analysis to try to find. Sh sure, but again, you're not going to be able to. You know, there, there's always you know, science and NASA. It got so bad at one point that NASA had to create a separate wiki entry that was third it was literally called and you can look this up now uh it's called third party confirmations of apollo landings which was wow. don't believe take our word for it here's other space agencies that says we that said we went there and it's bad i mean they they know they didn't at the time it's look you do it was 1960 through 1972 the internet was a, a, a way off not instant. hd monitors yeah. they didn't know it was coming and yeah and they didn't know people would be sharing the problem was with social media people were sharing so many files that you could get a consensus real quick and seriously all it takes is one nerd in, in his underwear at three o'clock in the morning in nebraska to find something and it's like hey if you considered this little thing right here and he shares it with a million people there you go well, I've also heard people theorize that even if, let's say, we did go to the moon and the Earth is round, that the Apollo footage that we were shown was still created by Stanley Kubrick or somebody in an L.A. soundstage because the U.S. government, it was such a hot, hot potato issue, you know, with the space race against the right. Russians right. that the, when we didn't know what was going to actually happen up there, that they had that footage prepared as a backup so that they had something to show yeah. to be like, yeah, we won. We landed on the moon. Yeah. So, I mean, there's many different theories right. about and, the moon landing. That's, that's a good spin, but I don't I don't buy it. I mean, it was too I mean, I honestly do tend to believe it was Kubrick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, not to, not to dwell, but, I mean, Kubrick was offered... If you went to Kubrick, I mean, all directors, it's all about the money. And if you go to Stanley Kubrick in the late 19... Or the mid-1960s, you say, look, you have a blank check. We need to know what can be faked on film... And we need your results. We need to use it. And then he comes back and says, okay, can I use what I'm shooting and turn it into a movie? It's like, fine, as long as it doesn't conflict what we're doing, fine. And he releases 2001 A Space Odyssey in 1968, which even now on freaking Blu-ray is gorgeous. I mean, it's absolutely, I mean, the, the visuals are amazing for 1968. And so, and then of course he got disillusioned with the project. And if you know anything about the documentary Room Two Two Three Seven, where he Seen built, it. yeah, where he built in his confession into the the movie The Shining, based on the Stephen King book from 1980. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's all there. And the question, yeah, but, but there's no reason for the kid in The Shining to be wearing Apollo sweatshirt. Oh my God! Oh. D d Good thing you brought that up. What bugged me about that was, right? So he's wearing that Apollo shirt, right? And this is modern time, you know, so it, it wasn't like that movie was supposedly set in another time. It was supposedly set in... No, it was 1980. It was in 1980. So why is that kid wearing a, a sweater that's made exactly for him that has Apollo on it, even though Apollo would have happened 12 years earlier? Why, why is he wearing that shirt? That kid was, way, you know, there's there's no reason he for He wasn't her, even born. Yeah, there's no reason for that for that mother to make that shirt in 1980. Uh, that was just one of so many things. Anyway. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. But, well, and I mean, I'm sure most of my younger uh, listeners wouldn't be aware of this film. But, and I mean, I think I was probably like eight years old when it came out. But take the, the Hollywood film Wag the Dog, where you oh, have... Yeah. You have, I think, was it Dustin Hoffman yep, who was starting yep, that, yep. who played a like a big time film director like Kubrick or a Steven Spielberg type, right. who gets hired by the U.S. government to stage a war. And there's been situations that have, where it's come out. I, I can't remember offhand, but there was a situation with like, I think it had to do with one of the. Gulf Wars or something where there was the girl that was supposed to claiming that some she was some Kuwaiti or whatever and then right. it turned out that she was an, like basically I think she was like the child of an ambassador or something do you know what I, yeah you know yeah yeah I, I, I know yeah. vaguely what you're talking about but yeah sure yeah. Yeah, I can't remember the details of it, but there have been cases where the U.S. government and other governments have fabricated things to get into wars or for excuses. 
I mean, not to go like this is, I guess, going down kind of a dark thing, but these are well, those were well known cases. But even the movie Wag the Dog, which came out, I think, in 1998, there was the one scene that mirrored the whole Monica Lewinsky thing. And it was kind of like, hmm, like where the girl was in the beret at the airport. And that kind of made you glance because it was like, when was this shot? You know, right. it was. Yeah. 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 So. Absolutely. And and by the way, the the moon missions, I I had never believed in it even back in the old days. You know, I was into conspiracies, but I couldn't figure out why. That was the part that bugged me. I was going, yeah, it's pr you know, it, it's fake, but I couldn't come up with a good enough reason. So okay, fine, we're America, rah rah, wave the flag, go team. I got that. It was good, but it wasn't a great reason. And then when I got into I, flat Earth, I was like, okay, I get it now. You have to, I mean, you have to fake it. Where I, I mean, like, I am like I'm saying, I'm not a believer in it's okay. necessarily it's okay. in flat Earth, but I will say to my my listeners out there, I am one of the people that doesn't particularly believe in the moon landing. Um, I mean, are we really supposed to believe that we got past the Van Allen belt of radiation right. and that we got all the way into outer space with like with technology that was our? Let's put it this way: our iPhones have way more technology than the than, than the, all uh, of NASA. Than all of NASA. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like, when I go from my first laptop that I got when I was 11 in, like, 2001, my first MacBook Pro to, or it was the iBook, to my current iPhone, my iPhone has way more capability than my my 2001 iBook. And my 2001 iBook was a far, 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 far more technologically advanced system oh, yeah. than what supposedly took us to the moon. Right. So I just, I have, a, I, I can understand, you know, that in the 40s with the propeller planes and you know aviation that stuff is crazy enough and right. but that i get it there's science it's kind of easy the the moon landing just seems like hocus pocus exactly yeah it's there's nothing again it's aged badly nobody went back uh they they used the same photo of the earth from space which they should have talked about in the documentary and they didn't uh from 1972 all the way through 2015 when we came out uh, 43 years only one shot of the earth from space in full sunlight uh and then nobody went that was the other thing nobody went back to the freaking moon the soviets stopped for whatever reason a space race where what uh, soviets just gave up eh, we're done they got here first no it was supposed to go we had three people they had four we have a small base they have a bigger base and then time magazine runs a story that says oh has the cold war reached the moon that's how it should have happened and instead it was the exact opposite the americans got there and it was like a television show which is like well that's it. Good night, everybody. That was it. They shut it down in 1972 and nobody, we're in 2019. Not only has nobody gone back in person, I don't care if the Chinese say they have a rover, that's all fake too. Uh, nobody is even talking about going back. Every, every president has made the same speech since Reagan. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, we're committed going back to the moon. You know, Obama. And then nothing happens. Nothing happens. It's like people, and people honestly assume that's like, well, yeah, we've, we've gone back. Have we? No. No, we haven't. Now we're talking about Mars. That's never going to happen. And Elon Musk is doing his thing. Anyway, sorry. I ran. Well, Elon Musk, when he did the car in space, I'm sorry. That was like, it looked like bad Photoshop to me. <clears throat> Hashtag I'm not buying it. I absolutely. I thought it was a joke. I thought it I was too. Did. I thought I, it was I, was. I didn't realize it was supposed to be real. I, I, I mean, it looked like something. I could have done a better Photoshop job when I was 15. <laughs> absolutely. I had a friend send me the link to to me and I, and I looked just at the screenshot, right? And I immediately thought Jaron from the, the Flatter Channel, Jaronism. I go, when did Jaron whip this thing up, right? Because I thought it was him. And and somebody, he writes back, goes, no, man. No, that's a live feed. I was going, what do you mean live feed? <laughs> it's like I'm clicking on this. I'm watching this. I'm going, I, is anyone believing this? There's no way. I'm sorry. There's two. R rattle them off real quick in 30 seconds. Uh, every windshield should have shattered from the heat and cold uh, differentials. Every pressurized system from, remember, it was a battery-powered car. Uh, the, the battery fluids to the window washer fluids to every lubricant in there should have exploded. The, 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 the tire should have detonated. Uh, the dash should have warped. And then, but the other thing that bugged me more than the others was the lack of marketing. So remember, that's a SpaceX Tesla venture. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a logo anywhere to be found. It was like they were playing it cautious just in case the social media turned on them. Because that, I mean, seriously, it should have looked like NASCAR. There's, that should have been wall-to-wall -wall stickers. Uh, in fact, why were you using the convertible in the first place? Why weren't you using the flagship S model from Tesla? I mean, heck, you could have put 
uh, just called up Disney and said, hey, let's put Iron Man in one seat, Groot, a Stormtrooper, and Boba Fett. That thing's paid for. And yet none of that mm -hmm. happened. Uh, even, the, even the mannequin didn't have a logo on him. I was like, wow, really? And so, yeah, that we destroyed And that how thing. is the mannequin staying in the um, convertible in outer space? Shouldn't it float out? I Good mean, point. is the seatbelt really going to keep it in Good point. I didn't see any straps on this thing. What, how are you right? How did he stay in the car? Oh, no, it was a, it was a mess, and he's never going to be able to do it again. I think it was a test on their part to see if they could fake space on the cheap. Could you fake space by, okay, let's just put it in a studio, fire up the graphics, and, and again, you can watch this in real time now and social media and there were too many people going and even even um, Elon said that stupid line, which was, you know, it's real because it looks so fake. That's verbatim. <laughs> That's like, why would you ever say I that? Even, I don't even know that I think it was done in a studio. I mean, I kind of feel like that was just photoshopped or, or was if there was video of it because I, I oh thought, yeah 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 know, i've got the video i mean you video. they oh, had okay. panoramic where that you know the so it, would have been, it would have been in a studio it was it was awful and and of course the, yeah, the, tra the television bad. transmission was perfect there were no frame drops no static mm -hmm. and then at one point they just turned it off where it's like oh yeah this thing's gonna go to mars now really when because you seem to be hanging around the earth a long time and then it was supposed to go to mars and then they just cut the transmission says oh we're with the we don't have any battery power left it's like what are you talking about? It was hooked up to a freaking capsule. Uh, what? Oh, sorry. That that card. How do they know it, if it's gonna get to Mars? How will they even know if it gets there if they have no exactly. transmission they battery power? They they. Uh, it was awful. Sorry. Anything Elon. Every time I see Elon make a headline, I just hold my breath and wait for the the carnage because he just says the the stupidest things all the time. Not just about this. I mean, he there was a a, a headline in uh, by the New York Post that said uh, Elon Musk is a total fraud. And, and I love that headline because everything he's ever promised, he has never, ever delivered on. It's like, hey, I'm going to make, make a super plane that goes from the United States to China in two hours, the price of a coach ticket. I'm going to do a bullet train from uh, San Francisco to L.A. underground. I'm going to rescue those kids in that mine with a super with a submarine. I'm going to uh, fix everybody in Puerto Rico's power problems with my solar power. And he just I mean, I'm going to send two people around the moon and back in 2018. It's 2019. Never happened. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe people invest in SpaceX. Personally, oh. I'd be terrified to go up there if it was, even if it is real. Oh, yeah. Got but to invest in some, because haven't people bought tickets on something? I know sure. one of these supposed, you know, uh, inter or maybe it's Virgin, Virgin Galactic, Galactic. People have bought yeah. tickets to, and I'm just like, you know, it, it hasn't, you don't know when it's going to launch, if ever. Why are you spending this kind of money? Right. Exactly. Yeah, it was. I, I don't. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're talking with every every space program, whether it's Blue Origin from Google or Virgin Galactic or SpaceX or whoever else is out there. That it's always this carrot that's at, that you're never going to catch. Everybody is the same thing. It's like, oh yeah, we'll be in Mars. It reminds me kind of. Um, I, you're probably not old enough to remember the um, the the hydrogen fuel cell cars, which they talked about for a no. long time. Which was the, yeah, that, that that was going to be a thing. Where it's like, okay, we're going to go to hydrogen fuel cell cars. You don't have to use electric cars anymore. And if they never could figure out how to get them to work, but they installed them in Southern California. And they realized the technology, they couldn't get them to work in cold weather. And that was it. But they kept saying the same thing. It's like, oh, yeah, 15 years, we got this. Five years later, 15 years, we got this. And then finally, they just gave up. They said, the physicists said, nope, can't do it. So that's what I feel. Yeah. What's also interesting when I think about with like the space travel and NASA, um, I don't know if you'd remember this, but hmm. it's interesting that when Lance Bass from InSync trained with the cosmonauts to go into outer space, something happened last minute and he was never able to actually go up. Yes, I do remember something about that. Did you know, by the way, that the Americans don't even launch, they haven't even launched a, a, a manned spacecraft from the state since 2011? They launched. Yeah, I, I, I vaguely feel like they we stopped doing our. Don't we have to go over to Russia? Yeah, or we launched France from or something Russia now. now and land in Russia and the reason Russia, who we're supposedly at. Yeah. at odds. Oh with. yeah, we yeah we've had a cold war. There are enemies sometimes, but when it comes to the space station, we're always friends with them. And yeah. the reason why we take off and land in Russian airspace is because Russian airspace can be controlled. American yep. airspace, really tough to be controlled nowadays. You've got too many people with private planes, too many people with, with yachts that can get out to the middle of freaking nowhere. 
And they're like, you know what? If we're going to fake this, again, production value, let's do it on the cheap. Make sure we can control everything. We'll just do it over in Russia, even though there's this huge conflict of interest. A lot of Americans also don't know we don't have a space shuttle program anymore. We, that's been gone. Yeah, that I actually knew. That, that's like 10 years. Not even. It's not even a thing. We just shut that thing down. It's like, okay, but we're you get $54 million a day. What are you spending the money on? And, you know, of course, if you have that sort of money and you're not, you could spend it on just about any black project you wanted. Anyway, mm -hmm. so. But the, my reason for bringing up Lance is because I wonder if they felt like if he, well, like that he, there's no way to shut him up. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, when it comes to. Or obviously he didn't go up if there's no such thing as a space program. Exactly. Uh, and then they can't fake it for him. So they just tell him, oh, well, you have an underlying medical condition we didn't find sooner or sure. whatever they told him to excuse why he couldn't go into space. Why, absolutely. Why, in fact, why don't, why, why didn't like, for example, Neil deGrasse Tyson ever go up? I mean, God, mm -hmm. if anyone should be going up there. It should be that guy. I mean, not Bill Nye. He's, ugh, I don't even want to get into Bill Nye, but uh, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson absolutely should have gone up there at one point or another. And mm -hmm. he didn't, nobody sponsored him. The astronauts, I had a chance to actually debate one of the astronauts, uh, Terry Virts. You know, the top, the big profile ones, um, Terry Virts and Scott Kelly from the U.S. and Chris Hatfield from Canada and Tim Peake from the U.K. And I had a chance to talk to Terry Virts and I realized as I was talking to him, because he wouldn't talk to me, he kept going mm -hmm. through uh, Piers Morgan. And I thought, here's the problem. The problem is nowadays is that all these guys are, people forget, these are high ranking military guys. Like, they're all colonels, full bird colonels in the United States military. They, they follow orders. So most of them, uh, you know, they're, they're soldiers. They sign the waivers and they're told, look, you do what we tell you. You're not allowed to think or, you know, or have moral problems. And that's that's about it. So when it comes down to people that are thinking about talking about it, remember, you, they do psychological profiling and anybody that has linked to the space program at all, every phone call would be monitored. Every email would be. Oh, yeah, if, if for you're... sure. My. My dad was in Iraq. My dad was in Iraq for 2004 and 2005. Mm -hmm. um, he I, and to this day, I really don't know what exactly he was doing. He's an engineer, and he had he had like top security clearance with the U.S. government yeah. for doing some engineering project. And our my my phone and my mom's phone and my parents were divorced. Our phones were taps yeah. up until probably like 2000. 13 or 14 yeah. when I switched out my Wi-Fi router the our Wi-Fi routers were definitely tapped because yep. um, it, At my mom's house we would have like the Wi-Fi would always go out at a certain point in the night and the cable company couldn't ever figure out why and they said that our our um, Internet was quote unquote running hot, which meant there was so much data coming out and they couldn't explain why. Yep. Like the cable company was stumped. And then when I would go stay at my dad's, the same thing would happen. Like when you leave his apartment in New York, the uh, the internet would go out and it, right. you always had to restart. And he used a different, co obviously a different company. And, and that didn't happen to other people. It's like, oh, it's just, it's because, and it actually turned out at that point he had actually gone back to Iraq. So I'm, my dad's obviously not dealing with stuff like, NASA, so I can't even imagine oh, yeah. the level of clearance and wiretaps and everything that anyone that is involved with something like NASA, whether it's real or fake, Absolutely. would have to go through. There was, um, we had one of our subject matter experts who was a Sparrow missile instructor for the United States Navy, and he called into the show a couple times. We had him on as a guest, and he was saying, look, we fire off at distances and there is no curvature of the Earth, We're, or and it doesn't spin. We're firing you know, at 50 plus nautical miles. And the guy that was monitoring the traffic on our side, he said it just lit up like a Christmas tree because this guy is literally an instructor, you know, 10 years in the United States Navy for a high tech missile system. And he said and he could read it. He's going, the DOD is pinging us nonstop. And, and it was because they want to know, you know, you've got a guy on the air, on the public air. It's like, you know, you, what, you're, it, it would never happen, but you don't want him to come on and say, oh, yeah, by the way, you know how you can disable this missile system, you know, with a chewing gum wrapper and a nine volt battery and a paper clip? You know, they don't want to give that sort of trade secrets. So, they yeah, they listen every all the time, all the time, just to, you know, they scan and see who's out there and who's talking and. You know, they, they people in authority do not take chances. They just don't. 
Now, before we go away from the whole firmament thing, Mm -hmm. um, which we talked about way back, I just wanted to broach a thought. And once again, I am not saying that I don't believe, I do not believe in flat earth, but I'm just broaching this thought to you as a flat earther because I don't, I never saw it brought up in any of the flat earth videos. Has anyone thought that if the firmament dome is above and below water, that that could be the reason for the great floods of the Bible? Absolutely. 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 Um, and it was talked about, I mean, it was kind of hinted in the um, the remake of Noah with, um, oh boy, the guy from Gladiator, Russell Crowe. Uh, and that is, uh, could it be possible that we are sandwiched between, you know, we have oceans down here, but that above us, because that would be the ultimate fail safe. In fact, uh, I think it was Rob Skiba, one of our own that kind of proposed that first. He goes, wouldn't that be the ultimate trick, which is you know, you create, uh, you know, you create this dome inside uh, some sort of water. And that way, if we ever penetrated the dome, we doom, you know, doom ourselves. And yet that's what the United States and the Soviet Union were trying to punch through for four years from 68 or uh, to, uh, wait, wait, sorry, 58 to 61. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Sure. Why wouldn't it be? People ask me all the time. It's like, what's the, what's the dome made out of? What's the barrier made out of? And it's like, well, take your pick. High frequency, electromagnetic force field, uh, heavy element, heavy water. Why not? Interesting. Mm. Um, now, what is your thought on aliens and UFOs? I have a different look on aliens and UFOs now. I've always believed in them. I've all, look, I've seen it. You want to have some fun. Uh, and it was recommended to me by a guy in England years ago before I got into Flat Earth. He said, you want to have some fun, grab some night vision binoculars. Yeah, they're, they're not too pricey. I don't think they run about 500 bucks. And just start, get your eyes adjusted and start looking up. Just lay on your back somewhere with a pillow and start looking up at the sky. And the sky is just freaking crawling with things. We only see a fraction of what's up there with our visual, with our eyes. You know, everyone's seen satellites and things flying up there. But there's a lot of stuff that's moving around that is not us. Uh, And again, you can see with night vision binoculars. That being said, are are they from Venus and Mars and Saturn and Jupiter and all that? Nah. No, I don't think so at all. I think that aliens are, I don't think they're aliens at all. I think they're just old versions of us. I think they're our ancestors. Uh, I don't think, not only are we enclosed, but I don't think we're the first people to rent this apartment. And by that, I mean that there, come on, there's older civilizations. We know the remnants. They're all over the place and not just the ones. So that are... do you think, Go do ahead. you think that they're like ghosts or do no, you no, mean no, no, that no, they're no. just I mean, they're, hidden versions no, of us? No, I mean, they're actually actual remnants survivors of previous civilizations okay uh so and not just the you know the 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 ruins that you find in uh, the the show ancient aliens i mean the stuff that's public knowledge like the sunken cities off of japan the sunken cities off of india the bosnian pyramids Mm -hmm. bimini road the real pyramids go there and stare at them and tell them we made them uh yeah but no i think that that every civilization has its time here and then during some sort of transition good or bad I think there's survivors uh, and maybe and when they're survived, I think they're instructed. I think there's protocols, which is you are not allowed to mingle with the surface civilization. You I don't go underground, go into a mountain, go wherever it is, but you aren't allowed to just show up on Main Street anywhere, come out, take a few selfies, sign a few autographs and, and you know, smile for the cameras. Because it would all, the second you do that, you change the paradigm. I mean, new religions would be formed overnight if some spaceship just showed up. Yeah, I mean, and then there's a lot of accounts of people seeing UFOs go into the ocean and oh, yeah. the water. There's yep. the anomaly in the Baltics. There's the alleged Malibu UFO base. So you could think that they, maybe they're an underwater civilization right who the hell knows right straight out of um um uh, the abyss the movie from the late 80s mm-hmm. yeah why not i mean if you have if these ships have a unified field engine which is the the balance between electromagnetic fields and gravitational fields then you could use it to do anything i mean you could build a city underwater it'd be cake you know by comparison you could it's it's almost unlimited what you could do now, one of your biggest arguments, which I found very, very interesting to support the idea of the flat earth, which I don't really have a a hard time figuring out the geography of flat earth. Sure. Like it, I could, it totally makes sense to me if it were real. Like it, I don't have a hard time comprehending. I don't know why it's hard for a lot of people to comprehend the idea of if you took the, took the globe and made it flat, it's really not hard to see it as a two-dimensional object. Right. But, um, the 
plane flight paths right. in the southern hemisphere are your biggest evidence towards it because it is really strange because if you look at a globe obviously if you're going from australia to south africa the easiest way to fly there would be to fly directly right. but that's not the case that doesn't exist you have to fly through europe you have to go up and it adds all these hours on and so that's always been one of your biggest yeah. um arguments with it yeah yeah, it was it was really interesting when I found it. It was a tip that was given to me by a guy in England who who said, "Look at the frickin' flight routes. There's something wrong," and really really focus on them. And I said, "Okay." And by that I mean when it comes to the northern hemisphere, we get off easy. We don't understand. Uh, I'll give you a great example though. I spoke with a tr corporate travel agent from Australia. And she said, you have no idea how much grief we get on a regular basis. People complaining because they cannot get nonstop flights in the Southern Hemisphere. And by that, I mean anywhere from Africa to South America to Australia. There are capital cities, capital cities down there. And it doesn't matter how much money you have, you cannot buy a nonstop flight from some of these cap capital cities. You have to bounce off. 95% of the flights in the Southern Hemisphere are double connections. They are all over the place. They go and they go north. That's the weird part. They all go like through Dubai or through Houston or San Francisco. It's like, why are you going these ways? Uh, and the routes, everyone, I've, look, I've talked to many people in the flight industry and it's all about the, the money. It's all about the fuel. Fuel is money and they don't waste a freaking ounce of it if they can help it. Flying routes that double your mileage doesn't make any sense. On, but again, unless you lay it on a flat map. On a globe, it looks like these severe angles that are going all the way north and all the way back down, these weird triangles. But on a flat map, they turn into shallow dog legs or they become straight shots. Um, a, another great example would be that woman uh, was not even two years ago where she was uh, leaving from the Philippines and heading to, towards Los Angeles and her water broke. And she was going to have her kid, right? Well, they're going to stop at a hospital, right? Well, they're going straight across the Pacific Ocean, right? Right across Hawaii. Hawaii should have been the closer option. You should have just gone straight to Hawaii and landed in Honolulu. Instead, they went north to Alaska. They went to Anchorage. Of that all, makes no sense. Of all places. And when you look at it on the map, on a flat map, yeah, you're flying right by freaking Anchorage. And it's you'd think, well, that, I know your listeners would be like, well, you're, you're saying that pilots might, uh, you know, that all these pilots would keep the secret. It's like, no, 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 pilots don't know. They suspect something's wrong and there's navigators that know something wrong. But I, every pilot I've talked to, they say the same thing. It's like, look, man, honestly, when we take off and we land and, and nobody dies, everything's great. You know, we just rinse and repeat and do that all day. Uh, and yes, every one of them says when we look out the cockpit window, we see flat. We see nothing but a flat horizon, no matter what elevation we go to. But even if they did, even and I said this in my clues, even if you believed if as a pilot that the maps were wrong and the globe model had some problem with it, who are you going to go to? Are you going to call up your, your supervisor? Are you going to go to the airline? Are you going to go to the FAA? They will bench you so quickly and make your head spin. So they yeah, all they just say that you're having some kind of psychotic episode yeah, or something. I mean, it, look, I mean, how many times have we seen it? Every pilot that has ever mentioned a commercial pilot has ever said, oh, yeah, I saw a UFO it was amazing. Benched forever. They don't get to go up again. And that's just a UFO. You, know, you tell them that the world's not round. <sighs> wow. I said round globe. Anyway, go ahead. Um, now, have you guys with the flat earth community, have you guys ever thought that the whole MA is it MH? 370 oh yeah malaysian uh, the, you know the malaysian air yeah. flight i think that uh i think this weekend is the anniversary of it actually um sure oh yeah yeah we absolutely have you guys thought that that maybe that it went off the firmament or something no that... no not that it went off in the no not it didn't it didn't go far enough to to go off into, it into, into nowhere's land but it was in a dead zone meaning it had gone far enough into the indian ocean to where there were no gps there was no GPS tracking out there. And you got to remember, people say the GPS system, in our opinion, is just a repurposed system from the 1960s called the Loran system, which was a ground-based system. Mm -hmm. All they did was they said, you know, they put a sticker on it, it said GPS, Global Positioning System. And they said, oh, we've got 32 overlapping blanket-covered satellites. There should be no gaps anywhere. There's gaps all over the place, huge gaps. And it's all when you leave land. If you get 150 miles away from land and there's no islands in front of you, you will fall off the radar. 
There's, I mean, yeah, your little your little plane icon may show up on your graphic on the back of your plane seat. That's it. Your your latitude and longitude isn't going anywhere. And by that I mean the Malaysian flight, especially the the triple seven. Look, that's a f- wait. So Go wait. Ahead. So like when I fl- when I flew to England, right? You're telling me that at one point I was off the GPS. Yes. Absolutely, you were. When oh, well, I didn't know that. well, depending. Okay, if you're flying to England, that's in the north. It's a little trickier. But if you are, if I'll, I'll just give you a better example. If you are over water and there is no land within 150 miles in every any direction, you're off the system. Okay, so like going to Hawaii. There, you, Hawaii is a perfect example because there's no islands between San Francisco or L.A. and Hawaii. You get out there, you are on your own for a while. And, and people think, well, you know, things just happen. It's like, no, no, no. The Malaysian flight was a triple seven. That's state of the art, right? That's a, one of the flagships out there. That thing's got more redundant systems and black boxes and everything. They never found a freaking trace of it. And they said, oh, no, we found this and that. It's like, you never found anything. You're just, they, they don't want to admit that, yes, they can lose planes. It's one of their big fears is if a plane goes down in a dead zone, they have no way to tell, they have no way to find it. Because it was never there. It was it was just approximated. It was just estimated. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, that's that's so creepy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But now, what about the shipping lanes? Shipping lanes, same sort of deal. You can look these up. There, unfortunately, they're so slow. Uh, and people initially we start saying, "Hey, can't you trap ships like you can planes?" Yes, you can, but there's a problem there, and that is. When it comes to uh, uh, time, when it comes to how long it takes a ship from get to here to here, ships can do something that planes can't. They can stop. And that happens all mm. the time. And so what was happening, remember, it's like watching paint dry when you're watching ships because they're so slow. And when they get to a port, if the port's not ready for them, they just say, hey, just hang out here. And so they just stop and they never make it to port and then they screw up all our calculations. Shipping lanes, not that much different, but most of the time we focus on airplanes. But so there's no ships that will travel from South Africa to to Argentina not, to again, Australia. Not, not using the same route. It's the problem is yes, they will travel, but the problem is the, they still have the same problem as planes, which is latitude and longitude. They long- still go up. Yeah, yeah. La- the latitude and longitude cannot be proven, which is why when I did Clue Nine, because people were saying again, it bugged me that in Clue Seven I said, "Look, I can't find any non-stops in the Southern Hemisphere," and then somebody found like five. It's like really a whole five non-stops in the Southern Hemisphere. We have literally thousands of non-stops in the Northern Hemisphere, like five in the North, and and then uh, that's when I started watching the the latitude and longitude, and when they dropped off, when they just dropped off the map. And I said, okay, so the the route can't be proved. Same thing with the ships. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, like, the whole that whole thing is one of the things that really made me think. I was like, hmm, because it doesn't make any sense whatsoever until you look at the flat Earth map. And obviously, if it was the flat Earth map, going from Johannesburg to Argentina would be a huge expanse of ocean that would take, like, right. 30 hours to go over right. versus on the globe map where it seems like that would be the most logical bird, bird migrations also if you get a chance look up bird migrations on a on a globe versus a flat map work the set work way better on a flat map it's it's, it's all over the place anyway sorry that's interesting yeah. so what's some of the other stuff that makes you a hundred percent a believer I'll, in the flat I'll, earth i will give you the five things that i threw there was a german television company that contacted me that said okay we because it's so tough to get debates with scientists because you don't want to be that guy you don't want to be a scientist that goes into a flat earth boxing match and if you don't not it's not that you 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 can't just win. You have to win quickly. And they, they can't. So they usually avoid it. So there was this Georgetown professor that wanted to go against me. And I gave him, they said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Rattle off five points. We will record you on video. We will give him the video. That way you're not talking over each other. And it's like, okay, fine. But they said the five points got to be as scientific as possible. Like, okay, okay, here's my five points real quick. Uh, first point would be long distance photography. And by that, I mean, um, be, if you try to prove that it's a globe without using NASA, eventually you're going to go to ships going over the horizon, right? And they'll say, well, you know, ships go over the horizon. They go off in the distance, they fall off the horizon, and you don't see them because they're on the other side of the curve. I said, yeah, 10 years ago, that was absolutely true. 
I would have been right there with you. But now we have HD with, um, with digital zoom. And now we can zoom in on these boats and they're not gone anymore. Now they're back in frame. And you say, well, no, uh, it's a mirage. You're like, no, nope, they're right there. You can see them clear as day. They're not wavering. It's just, it, they're just there. Plus we can target them with weapon systems and they show up on infrared. And then they go off again and again and again. And finally, it's like we've gotten to the point now where we can see objects in the distance 150 or plus miles. And the only thing that's stopping us from looking further is the thickness of the atmosphere itself. Because remember, we're breathing in kind of a th like a thin version of water. It's only mostly transparent. So we're breathing um, uh, four parts nitrogen and one part oxygen. So that's, that's usually the first one that I throw at people. Um, long distance photography, because you can go to any beach and do this. And lots of people did. I didn't even do this in the clues. They just came out and, and did it on their own. Second one would be uh, gravity versus the vacuum of space, which is the, you know, the atmosphere we have down here, this nitrogen and oxygen, is being held down by some sort of gravity. Well, there's a problem. That is pressure needs a container. So we have atmospheric pressure. But so where's the bleeding edge of space? Where does our atmosphere end and the vacuum of space begin? Because a vacuum force is really, 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 and I can't overstate this, really strong. And it should just tear off our atmosphere instantly. I mean, with, with violent forces, and it does not. Uh, so where, how is that, how does that work? And well, if it's enclosed, it absolutely works because it's a pressurized system. Um, third one would be, and if you want to, you can cut it at any time if you want. Um, third one is the um, moon, which is the moon eclipse shadow. And I had a chance to watch the moon eclipse in 2017. It was really, really cool. It was part of the part of the documentary. And that is if the moon yeah, is no, too... Yeah, that was a cool thing. Yeah, it's, honestly, if you see the blackout zone, oh, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, forget about this 95%. No, no, you got to get in the blackout zone. But the blackout zone is really, really small. I mean, remember, it's a 2,000 wide, 2,000 mile wide moon, and the blackout zone is only 70 miles. That's like a 97% decrease. That's like you walking next to a building, and your shadow shows about the size of an action figure, if not, not smaller. Well, if that's the case, then why doesn't the Earth, when it gets in front of the sun, when that blackout zone goes on the moon, why don't we see a blackout zone of 250 miles? We never see it. We never see any blackout zone at all. We just see this blood red moon. Doesn't make any sense. Should be work equally for both. Um, the fourth one would be the temperature of the moon, which is fascinating. In, my, in fact, I, I was told this, and I still didn't believe it. I was in Flat Earth for a year when I heard this, <clears throat> which is the moon generates a cold light. And people say, no, it's colder at night. It's like, no, 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 meaning it's cold in the moonlight, meaning um, if it's 90 degrees in the, in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade. We all know this because whatever object mm -hmm. blocks the sun. But if you're in the moonlight, it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, and it's warmer in the moonshade up to 13 degrees and that doesn't that's make bizarre yeah that's that's the exact opposite of what we would expect and you're saying okay does that prove a flat earth no it does not does it absolutely destroy the relationship between the sun and the moon in terms of the moon reflecting uh yes it does and in fact we can duplicate this this type of light i didn't know it was possible um it's called a cold laser and universities have had this thing for years and and you know you can focus this beam on whatever and you can chill things i mean not that it would be used in refrigerators to chill your lettuce or anything but you can do this in a in a in an environment and last but not least something you mentioned which was uh, the van allen radiation belt trap question which is and i i bolted down to something really really easy and i was really hoping i could use this as an astronaut which is are the van allen belts deadly yes or no it's an easy easy question and then somebody I mean, says, yes. and say, well, yes, they are deadly. It's like, really? Then how did the Apollo astronauts get through round, multiple round trips? Uh, nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's five of these guys still walking around today. Um, everybody died. Yeah, but I think a lot of them got cancer. No, they no, they didn't. Cancer. No, they didn't. Well, I mean, not 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 that type of cancer. I mean, yeah, of course, you know, normal. There's normal forms of cancer, but not there are a lot of people get cancer. Yeah, yeah. They're not not the the radiation type of cancer. Um, but, uh, and, and they used only aluminum and plastic shielding. Look, the only way to stop radiation, radiation is a real thing. Uh, ask your dentist, uh, is lead, gold, and a lot of water. One of those three things. And none of those things were used in any, any amounts on the space program. So the flip side of that question is like, fine, they aren't deadly. It's like, really? Well, then you can go to the nasa.gov website, which is there right now. You can look up a little video called Orion trial by fire which is a video that NASA made at the end of 2014, where they said, not only are the belts deadly, they're so deadly that we can't even test our Mars capsules on, with human beings in them until we solve the radiation problem. 
Well, that's kind of That it. makes no sense because we supposedly went to the moon. Exactly. It's like you, you solved it in the 1960s. It completely, totally. Not only did you solve it with the capsule, you solved it with the suits. So why are you saying that you can't solve this? And between those five questions, the, the professor just, that was it. He was done. He was like, nope, I'm done. And that was then the German television team shut down the project. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, I mean, that's what... I, Flat Earth is one of those conspiracy theories where I kind of just feel like, okay, there's a possibility because there is a very compelling argument. Now, in the documentary right. Behind the Curve, right. which anyone who has Netflix, I think it's also on Prime. and I'm, It's, on, it's on, on everything. Street, Amazon, iTunes. Everything now. Yeah, it's on everything. Yeah, okay. So I saw it on Netflix, but yeah, it's, it's everywhere that you can stream movies um in the documentary they bought i can't remember what it's called but somebody actually and that's the funny thing flat earthers have money um mm -hmm. somebody actually donated like twenty thousand dollars to buy the um i yeah the, I, initially if they this, misquoted like, laser gyroscope right a gyroscope thing. um now okay two two things one it wasn't quite twenty thousand dollars and two they got the name wrong. It wasn't a ring laser gyro. It was a fiber optics gyro. Not that that makes any difference. You know, either way, it's it's a freaking gyro. And your question would probably be, did they measure some sort of movement? Was that the question? Well, in the documentary, didn't they kind of accidentally like disprove right. flat Earth right. by using the gyroscope? Yeah, between that and the laser experiment on the end, first thing I'm going to tell everybody, if you're going to watch this, is po the power of editing. you got to remember, the director and the producers hated Flat Earth by the time they got to the end mm -hmm. of it. They hated it. Now, they liked the people. I mean, the whole thing started because they came up to me and, and said, hey, you know, you seem like a pretty normal guy. How would you like to turn this into something? I was like, okay, sure, why not? Let's introduce you to a few people, which was fine. Uh, but the, by the time they got to the end of it, they hated it. And so they edited the hell out of that thing to where they took everything out of context as best they could. Uh, the, when it came to the, the gyro, I, that's all I really can comment on because I wasn't there for the experiment. Is something moving? Is the sky moving at 15 degrees or are we moving at 15 degrees? That's the big question. If you watch any time lapse of the sky, of course, it's going to look like the sky is moving. And for thousands of years, that's what we thought. And then science came in 500 years ago and says, no, we're moving. The sky is actually stationary. I was like, okay. And then with the laser thing at the end with, with Jaron, uh, I'm going to let Jaron defer on that one. Um, I, I, I know at the same, here, here's a perfect example. The same time that was being shot, we were doing a 40 kilometer laser test, 40 kilometers, not that three kilometer thing that Jaron was doing at Lake Balaton in Hungary in freezing conditions with a military grade laser. It was really expensive and we had that thing perfectly leveled out. Guinness Book of World Records was there with us and we shot it and it was flawless. So the question is, why, mm. didn't, why didn't they talk about that? Why didn't the, the, um, the documentary team talk about long distance photography or anything else? They initially said they did not want to make it a nuts and bolts movie. And I've got to throw this in because this will make sense to you. Uh, the reason why they tweaked it against us at the end was because, if you watched it, um, it was the Raleigh conference, there was a 12-year-old kid that walked up to the microphone and he asked me something on stage. That really bothered them. That was like, and, and it wasn't just them. National Geographic did the same thing, and there's other people I've interviewed with, and it's like, it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. And it's like, look, we're not recruiting the kids. If a 12-year-old wants to talk to me about Flat Earth, I'm going to talk to him about Flat Earth. But, one, but they, they felt that they had a responsibility to lean against us. I disagree. Uh, you know, it's not like we're a cigarette company that's pushing Joe Camel on kids. You know, we don't have a special... No, it's not like it's something dangerous. No, no, it's not. Look, we have Flat Earth, and they even talked about it in the thing. We have, we have music. I, there's a playlist on my channel, 300, at least 300 tracks for Flat Earth, and they're all happy things. I mean, part of the reason we even got into this, if you remember, was um, rapper B.O.B., at the beginning of uh, yeah. 2016, Grammy nominated. And he comes out and he makes a Flat Earth album and a song directed against Neil deGrasse Tyson called Flatline. And and still a happy, you know, it's still a kind of a positive song. I mean, yeah, he picks on Neil and that didn't, you know, that turned into a real nightmare after a while. But anyway, so sorry, I ramble. Yeah, there's some celebrities. Wasn't Shaq also another flat earther? So, yeah. So 2016, it was mostly B.O.B. Uh, B. and the Neil deGrasse Tyson thing going back and forth. The media loved that. And then in 2017, 
just before the All-Star game, Kyrie Irving, who played for the Cavaliers at the time, uh, came out full-blown. Said, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't he? He just won a championship with Le- Le- LeBron. And, uh, you know, he was 25. He had nothing to lose. Like, yeah, I'm a flat earther. Deal with that. And the media just descended on him. Because he showed up at media day literally 12 hours after he, he made that statement. And then Shaquille O'Neal backed him. And it's like, okay, now, and which is why they, they kind of touched on it in the documentary. And the, everyone was going nuts. And But remember, she, Shaquille O'Neal makes, uh, I think, $20 million in endorsements. And it, <laughs> it only takes one. Look, his agent, I'm sure, called him up and said, uh, well, you know what? The Arizona Tea Company probably is not going to be a big fan of this. So you might want to take that back. And so they put him like up really quick. They put him on Jimmy Kimmel almost immediately. And that was the first question they asked him out of the gate. Not even, hey, how are you? How's it going? No. So you were kidding about that flat earth thing, right? Literally, that was the first line of, of that interview. And, you know, just to try to backtrack him from it. But it, it, it didn't matter because 10 days in the media world, that's forever. If you have a stiff, you're... I don't- Sorry, go ahead. I don't understand, though, like, why it's so controversial. I mean, whether it's real or not, I mean, you know, it's it's not even a religion. Like, it's, why are people so upset? Like, if, you know, I'm, I'm atheist, okay? Right. But if people want to believe in Jesus Christ, which to a lot of people might seem ridiculous, right. that's their prerogative and, like, that's... They can do that. I'm not going to sit there and mock them. I don't understand. Like, if you guys want to believe that the Earth is flat, who's it bothering? Like, it's not hurting anyone. There's no real it, rap, like, like negative repercussions of either which way. I love the fact. Thank you, by the way, for saying that because I wish there were so many more people like you. Uh, however, the the reason why we get so much pushback is because it's one of the few conspiracies you can't walk away from. And by that, I mean, if you don't want to believe in 9-11 or JFK or Sandy Hook or Pearl Harbor or whatever, there's so many in a list longer in my arm, you know, if conspiracies out there, you don't have to. There are conspiracies that are buried in the desert that are going to stay a secret. And if you don't want, you don't want to go home and watch the Kardashians or whatever, you don't have to deal with it. But if somebody comes to you and says, and I'll give you a quote. Uh, there was a guy that called into a radio show in 2016 when I was, when I was doing this, an older gentleman. And he said, you know, his father worked for NASA and he, again, it was completely unsolicited. He calls in, he goes, he goes, how dare you? How dare you tell me the world isn't what I think it is? Because remember, you can't walk away from that. That's kind of like, uh, I'll use, again, you may not be old enough to remember the matrix, uh, but the, when Neil was first told about the matrix and he was freaking out because he couldn't take it. It was like a world paradigm change. He was so used to the world that he knew. And then all of a sudden you're telling this person that the world is not what you think it is. The universe is not what you think of. You're turning basically the universe into a, a giant studio apartment. And for a lot of people that <laughs> freaks them out, especially since they've been shown the globe in their classroom since they were six years old. Remember, you know, that, that's classic conditioning. You, you know, you, you sit there, even if you don't go to, to college, uh, you know, it's 12 years of a globe just sitting there. You, you sit with anything for 12 years. It might as well be the American flag. You're willing to fight for it. And so some people do. It It really triggers them. It is the most, and I don't care what polarizing topic, I don't care if it's religion or abortion or gay rights or black rights or women's rights, flat earth tops them all in terms of being polarizing. People just lose it. Uh, they, again, they go through the five stages of acceptance, you know, denial, then anger, uh, bargaining, depression, and finally they, they kick in. But yeah, that's why. That and of course, the other thing real quick, which is peer pressure. More than anything, um, peer pressure will, it, 90% of our community is in the closet. I know this because I get emails from them every single hour and they all say the same thing. It's like, look, I, you know, I, I, my coworkers or my friends or my family, uh, they're, they're just scared to death. Uh, podcasts, well, I've done the Alex Jones show. Great example. Uh, and I, I I'm sorry, I know I'm rambling, but the Alex Jones no, show, fine. when they contacted me back in uh, the end of 2016, I think, maybe, yeah, end of 2016. I'm going to guess you probably got a lot of hate from uh, them. Well, no, 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 no. In fact, they wouldn't do it. They they contacted, oh. they contacted me and they said it was a, one of the weirdest questions. They said, how long can we do a Flat Earth show without actually saying the words Flat Earth? And I said, oh, you could dance around it for about 10 minutes. 
and that's it. That's all you got. And then someone. Wow. Is, and, so Alex Jones wouldn't even touch it. No, no. And that was it. They said, sorry, we can't do it. The backlash. And I've heard this from people. Wow. You look, I'm sorry. I, and I, wow. <laughs> like, uh, no, you're putting that into perspective. I've, I've actually been on the Alex Jones show and I was accused basically of being a Satanist or something ridiculous. Right. And I, I ended up getting like thousands of like things of hate mail yeah. of ridiculous things from his fans accusing me of being like involved with i'm a registered republican i was involved with the clintons the, i was <laughs> part of the satanic pedophile rings and i was a high priestess oh, witch yeah. because i wore black and had people said i had bibles behind me that were like from the 1800s that were in my my old bedroom and people were like oh those are witchcraft books i'm like really the king james <laughs> bible from 1860 something is a witchcraft book um oh, but yeah so I, I, so my mind is blown that there was a subject that they would not touch because I have, I have sometimes had, I've had guests that were on my show who were, uh, I wouldn't put you in the category of whack jobs. Right. There have been people that I've talked to that are absolute, just like, this is wacky, right. um, who have been on Alex Jones and I'm like, and then an Alex Jones show is like, oh, this person is a very credible filmmaker. And I'm just like, really? Because <laughs> like, I know how crazy they were when I interviewed them. Um, yeah. So that they would not touch you. No, they that, wouldn't. That, and and that I and I got that. Look, and it was wasn't the first time. Other other podcasts said the same thing. In fact, I've done interviews where and you you haven't. I mean, you're great. Um you're open-minded about stuff, but there have been other podcasts that look, they said, you know, while we're off air, they said, "Look, we are really nervous about doing this because we're afraid wait, of it." The... Wait, can I just like interrupt again too? The other reason why it shocks me with Alex Jones yeah. because yeah, like me being an atheist is like, oh, that witch. Right. Like they are very, 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 most of their core audience is fundamentalist Christian. Right. And your firmament thing, it totally backs up the idea. Like it backs up Christianity. Sure. So sure. you would think they'd be even more inclined because it follows their you'd, agenda. You'd think so, but it's it's weird. It's kind of like I use the wedding thing, whereas nobody wants to be the first person on the wedding dance floor. You always wait for some drunk people, you know, to finally get out there and, and make themselves look stupid. And then enough people get out and you go out. Uh, that's what it's kind of like with this, whereas everyone's a little nervous. Look, I've talked to celebrities. I've talked to people that, that absolutely believe in Flat Earth. And they, they all say the same thing. It's like, look, we can't come out. There's no way. It's just it's too it's still too risky. And, and it's been it hasn't been a slow process. It's happened in waves. And so when um, when Ky Kyrie and the Shack thing and, and honestly the documentary has helped us more than than just about anything, but yeah, it's again a combination of peer pressure, and uh, you know you don't want to look. Everyone wants to put put their best foot forward, and nobody wants to embarrass themselves. And because because it seems like such a simple thing, right? I mean, we're told it's the only conspiracy we de debunk to children. Right. You know, we don't tell children about JFK or Pearl Harbor or any of that stuff, but we do tell them that this is the world and it used to be flat, but we don't think that anymore. And I find that fascinating. Again, it's just reinforcement to where I'll, I'll give you a quote real quick. This is in the description box of every video I've ever made, which is from George Orwell. I thought it was I thought it was really great. And he said he was not a flat earther. But he said, you know, he was talking about science and how people just believe science, period, because they're scientists, right? They're smarter than us. And he says, you ask anybody on the street right now, what, it, you know, uh, how they know the world is a globe. Their first response is always the same. Well, we just know. Duh. We, we know it's a globe. And then you say, really? How do you know? How do you know it's a globe? And they, they all start getting angry, irritated about it. What's interesting was, is he wrote that article in 1946. And NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in the world know that the world was a globe in 1946? Because they were told. That was it. We believe mm -hmm. the world. This is straight out of the Truman Show reference. And that is we believe the world that is presented to us. We do. We, we're told, we take a lot of things yeah. at face value. And, and why well, would you think that? And then Go ahead. with NASA, most of the pictures, and this is not, this is not a conspiracy. I mean, this is fact. Most of the supposed pictures of the earth are composites right absolutely they i are. mean that's actually like they i mean they they don't even try to hide they that don't. and the thing is that some of them um i i did interview another flat earther about like a year or two ago uh john eric davis and he brought up the fact he even sent us uh, back then i had a co-host he sent us the picture on the nasa website where if you look if you zoom in at the clouds whoever 
did the composite, got bored, and thought it'd be funny to spell out the word sex right. on the globe. Right. So like they're they're here photoshopping the word sex onto oh, yeah. globe pictures on NASA's website. Right. So like, are we supposed to believe like that they're above doing anything else? Absolutely. The um the first there was an interesting little trivia story. Uh, the first iPhone that came out, you know, uh, had a had a picture of the globe on it, right? Uh, a nice blue and green picture. And what was interesting is that only years later, uh, I think it was, was it Robert Simmons? Uh, I can't, his last name was Simmons. And he did an audio interview where he's, he was the one that created that. And he worked at NASA. He was just a, a graphics guy at NASA. And the reason why is because they had no images of the Earth to put on the iPhone. They didn't have any. And so he had to create it from scratch. And he made it with, you know, Photoshop and, and layered the hell out of it. And it was weird because when you got when you got to the bottom hemisphere, it was like he it's like he finished it on a Friday or something like at five o'clock because he just used the cloning tool and just cloned a bunch of the towel a bunch of the clouds in the southern hemisphere and that was the one that was used on the iPhone. But what's interesting was that when I'm I pulling went, this picture up now the what I'm pull, I'm looking for this picture. Oh now. yeah yeah yeah. Look up um, Blue Marble Simmons NASA. Uh, I can't remember his last name. Uh, or you could just say photoshopped because it has to be and that'll that'll probably bring it up But you you'll recognize it because it was it was the first thing that yeah. was put on the iPhone Now here's what was weird was that I got a chance to go down to the Kennedy Space Center in Houston uh, Just recently with well during the documentary for Patricia Steer and they left this part out of the documentary and I pff, They did that deliberately which was we go into one of their big showcase things is They have a full-blown 747 with space shuttle on top of it outside of the thing That's one of their big things. It's been out there for years and years And when I go in there though, it had updated graphics and so there was on one of the walls that image It was literally the image from the iPhone right there and they were they were selling it like it was a it was a real space image. There was no notes around it, and it wasn't like, oh yeah, by the way, this is the one that was created for the iPhone, and we just happened to grab it and put it on some poster board and put it in the plane. It's like you're, they're pushing everything as real stuff, even though you know because the average person will miss it. Do you see that image or not? Do you want me to look it up for you? Yeah, no, I'm seeing it. I'm also looking at like on Snopes the. 1978 versus 2012 image right. i mean the thing that's kind of funny to me about a lot of these earth images is they don't even look like the same no. like the, the the north america is different sizes yeah, the russians look different than the japanese the japanese look different than ours uh the color palette's off the continents are off the cloud formations are off they're just horrible and again it, the average person wouldn't catch it because they're not looking they, they wouldn't look uh, you want some fun look up some of the and you think it was bad bad now It was really bad in the 80s when no one would cared about the space program And we supposedly had space shuttles going up all the time and there's this one image of the the Challenger astronauts um, You know before before the the fateful crash where they you know, supposedly all died and they're they're sitting there and they're they're lined up And they're they're holding these helmets and I thought oh they must be just photograph helmets because they look like motorcycle helmets I mean they looked exactly like motorcycle helmets. I'm going mm -hmm. okay because they don't want to use the spacesuit helmets Whatever it's like, you know, it's a photo op and then I see some of the footage from the 80s where they're supposedly launching and they're inside the space shuttles and they're wearing these helmets and the thing is they're there they're with short sleeve shirts no gloves the helmets don't even I mean you can see their bare necks and it's like, wait a minute, aren't you supposed to be wearing full-blown spacesuits? It's because in the 80s, we, we literally paid no attention to the space program. So they did no production value. It's like, yeah, no one's going to care. No one's going to question us. We're just going to we're gonna do it our way. It was mind-blowing. Yeah, those do look like motorcycle helmets. They are motorcycle helmets. They're absolutely motorcycle helmets. And why why are you using these? It's supposed to be a, a, a pressurized suit. Why are you using why aren't you wearing gloves? I mean that was the thing later It was like once once television got better and once camera technology got better They seemed to kind of up their game just enough to where people wouldn't question it. It's quite genius actually Yeah, no, this is interesting Yeah, yeah I don't know what to think. I really don't know what to think about it. I'll probably delve more into the videos hey, and I, you know what you don't have I'm, I'm not here to convince you I'm not here to convince your listeners uh, All I'm here is to, to, to plant the seed and say look I, I've given you some things to think about but don't take my word for it. Do your own research ask questions and See what you come up with because I was like everybody else everybody goes into the flat earth community and says I'm going to debunk the flat earth and then 
if they try. You know what? I'm going to go the other way with you real quick. I know I don't, we're running out of time. Okay. The other way, which is, you know what? To your listeners, don't look at it. Don't do it. Don't if you like your life the way it is, if you everything's just fine, you think you got a good beat on things, don't look into flat earth. Because if you do, you're gonna go down a tunnel and it's gonna take you a few weeks, and when you come out the other side, everything's gonna be different. If you think you're ready for that, sure, fine, go ahead. But if you're you know, your life is like, oh, I can barely contain what's happening with me now, hey, you know what? Just keep doing what you're doing. You'll be fine. There you go. Well, you make a very compelling argument. And like I said, I want to delve more into it. And I'm sure a lot of the listeners will. And maybe we'll have you back on. It seems like you know a lot about some other conspiracies. So it might be fun to talk about those sometimes. I I do have an opinion on every conspiracy you can think of. Yeah, no, I I love going down the conspiracy rabbit hole. I'm really bummed that it's become such a taboo topic and that uh, social media and YouTube are cracking down on stuff. I mean, for the most part, I just think it's fun i don't take it take it to heart but i guess there's a few lone nuts have destroyed it for everyone mm, but um yeah. oh yes. before we go because i was gonna say like thanks for coming on oh, oh, no, where can people find you where like what's your youtube channel where can they where can i'm people around find your videos? you can find me um so you know it's easy all you have to do is type in um flat earth clues into google or youtube that's probably going to be the easiest way to find it uh, my channel is called mark Sargent very easy to find that's where i spend most of my time but you know don't just focus on my stuff yeah my stuff is easy i'm the freshman recruiter for flat earth university so i'll get you in the door but there are so many great flat earth videos out there um if you get past my stuff just click on i've got a there's a list out there called the flat earth shortlist for new people which is a bunch of great content for a lot of people look at that and then again enjoy enjoy the rabbit hole because it is the most fun of all (laughs) Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Until next week. Later, guys. See ya.